Hello everybody. Radiology is considered a department which is full of shades of black, white and grey and very limited colours. So are we really a department which is dull? Are we really a speciality which is colourless? Do we have more emotions than just grey and white? So let's see how love is in radiology. As usual, I start with a disclaimer. This video is made for an entertainment purpose only. All findings could or could not be fictional. If they are true, of course I take credit for it. And if they are not accurate, I deny them totally. So kindly do not take it too seriously and just sit back and enjoy. Radiology is all about appearances, about various things that you see. Whether it be a peak at a static heart, peak at a beating heart or even you listening to the heartbeat. I think we possibly are one of the few specialities which can actually look and hear both the beating heart at the same time. So what else do we have in radiology other than looking at the heart directly? Well, we are a romantic lot. We are a lot which is filled with a lot of observations, which is filled with imagination. So we have a lot of signs, appearances and findings. Any love story, most of the love stories at least, start with a lot of uh, playfulness and naughtiness with a wink here and there. So yeah, we have a winking out sign. Then, which love story is complete without gifts and the traditional gifts that are accepted are flowers, chocolates and jewellery. So we have the rose thorn ulcers, the licked candy sign, the chocolate cyst and the string of beads or string of pearls sign happens to be a big favourite with us radiologists. We have the fibromuscular dysplasia, the polycystic ovarian disease, small bubble obstruction, uh, watershed infarcts, adenomyomatosis, verrucous bronchiectasis. Definitely, I think one of our favourite signs. How many of you can really relate to this image? I think the new generation would find it difficult, but the older ones would be able to relate to this image very well. This is a clipping from movie Romeo and Juliet. And in the earlier times, there were very limited opportunities where a girl and a guy could meet. So you could see it in many movies or serials where the guy climbs up the pipe and meets the female across the window, across the balcony or across the terrace. And what happens when the father arrives? He jumps off and so fractures his calcaneum, rightly known as the lover's fracture. I'm sure the new generation would not be able to relate to this because they live in a virtual world where they can virtually meet practically daily or any time. So they do not have to go beyond their limits, have all these stunt-filled love stories. What is the next stage of our love story? You have the proposal. And so out comes the signet ring sign for us, which is seen in bronchiectasis. So we have a sign for that too. Again, like the string of beads sign, kissing happens to be a very big favorite for us radiologists. So you have the kissing ovaries, you have the kissing tonsils, you have the kissing carotids, the liver and spleen kissing, the kissing contusions, kissing osteophytes, the kissing spine. And if we look at it from a spiritual perspective, the balance between the yin and yang, the male and the female, so well, we have that too. We have the yin and yang sign in the pseudoaneurysm, the to and fro motion. So we have that too. What beyond that? So these are the named eponymous fractures or lesions or signs. So when we look at the appearances, when you stretch your imagination or when the lesions or the normal anatomy shows itself in a way, romantic eye of a radiologist is able to pick up these findings and there are various resources are compiled from various resources some really beautiful images that we have come across where we have indirect images of love or heart something that symbolizes love so let's look at it this is from rsna itself through bones through vessels through implants we are showing or portraying love how many can understand what this symbol stands for for those of you who do not know it, it is I love you. It's a symbol in the language for the deaf and dumb. And uh, this is how the symbol goes. You have the I, the L and the Y or the U. So you have the I love you. And that is how radiologists show it. Now let us look at the 
shape of heart portrayed or seen in various places when we image the coronal reconstructed image of the female thorax the mycetoma in the lung happens to look like the heart you have a liver abscess you have a biconiate uterus in the core image even the great saphenous vein which wants to look like a heart but the best of all is the center image where you have a gestational sac which looks like a heart truly a fetus in the heart you have so many hearts in the brain too you have it a lymphoma which looks like a heart an enhancing uh, lesion in the neurosarcoidosis the brain stem which looks like a heart in an arnold sciari malformation patient and a brain abscess if we try to draw the symbol of heart this is how we would do it and this is how it would look in an mri and an x ray there's a lot of hearts in the pelvis too now we have a median lobe hypertrophy we have the bladder in the shape of a heart and the small bowel doesn't want to be left behind so it falls in a way which makes us uh, get the shape of a heart with all of these people or all of these areas showing the shape of the heart the musculoskeletal system didn't want to be left far behind so we have a lipoma which is shaped like a heart we have a popliteal lymph node which is shaped like a heart so this is all about the various appearances incidental findings or stretched out imaginations so now coming to some interesting bit which is uh, some findings which have been put across through various studies it is not uh, academically appropriate i would never say that it is just part of a very a lot of studies and observations that are being made so love looks not with eyes but with the mind that's what william shakespeare said in midsummer night's dream so truly when uh, there was a lot of studies that were happening and it, they said that brains light up when we are in love and when the possibility of functional mri came in where you could actually assess the functioning of the brain and assess the centers that are involved and be able to pinpoint into the activity or genuinity of the action i'm sure many people would have been scared because you can actually not feign love you know you can actually pick out whether the areas that are lighting up in functional mri are the areas that are involved in love so you might be able to say whether the person is in love has fallen out of love or has never been in love so who knows maybe the future is where they use functional mri for sorting out cases of divorces divorce petitions infidelity it might be the future we never know so with all this speculation what do the neuroscientists say they say that love looks like addiction because when you are in love when a person is in love looks at images of the people they are in love try to develop or think of those emotions there is heightened activity seen in the ventral tegmental area and caudate nucleus which is also associated with addiction no wonder we say that i am addicted to you when a person is in love falling in love reduces your ability to judge Okay so these are certain areas amygdala controls fear mid temporal cortex controls the negative emotions frontal lobe controls judgment and the posterior cingulate gyrus controls empathy and love switches off the action of all these centers no wonder we say love is blind and a person in love is also blinded the next thing the neuroscientists say is that getting rejected is like going through withdrawal No wonder we said being in love is like addiction so getting rejected is like withdrawal. So when you are rejected you continue to have the activity in the areas where you were in love because you still are in love. But in addition to that have elevated activity in regions that are linked with craving and distress that is the anterior cingulate gyrus and the insular cortex. So truly when you are rejected you are in love you have the emotion of craving and you are in distress it's so interesting to see how we can figure out our emotions and relate it to the actual neurophysiology and be able to place it neuroanatomically this is possibly the future but it's a very interesting thing to know i'm not sure how academically sound this would be but this is an interesting fact to know so basically happiness comes from small small moments small small incidents so learn to appreciate it It's very easy to look at something and just not imagine it as a shape but reality is something about appearances about imaging about what you see what you perceive so be a child again imagine things learn to love the smaller moments in life 
so we can make radiology a beautiful place we can enjoy radiology we can make it love filled so fill your life your uh, profession with love and laughter 